Hello and welcome to this sample lesson from the foundational flash lessons from Learning Craft. I'm Rob Graham and it's my pleasure to be able to show you around a little bit of the flash development environment to give you an understanding of the types of things that go into our lessons. To begin with, let's take a look at what we will be creating in the next few minutes. And what we have over here is our file for an interactive time waster. And when I roll my cursor over, I have these little boxes which appear and change color go through the spectrum of the rainbow, and then eventually go back to being black as the screen clears itself. And I can always come back in anytime I want and doodle a little bit more. So that's our interactive time waster. Now, let's go take a look at how it's built. To begin with, I need to create a movie clip. Most of the functionality for our color changer is going to be as part of a movie clip. So to do this, I'm first going to go to my insert menu and I'm going to select new symbol. And that allows me the option of going into determining the type of symbol I want to create. And in this case, I want to create a movie clip and I'm going to just call this color changer and click OK. Now this takes me into the timeline for the movie clip and it allows me to build whatever I want to within this space. To begin with, what I want to do is select my rectangle tool. And then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to make sure that there's no stroke color on the object that I draw. And I'm going to set the fill color to black. And what I really want to do is just go and create a, a small square. I'm going to hold down my shift key to help me make sure that my square is square. And now that I have that in place, it's really just a matter of taking that and I want to copy it along the way. Now what's going to happen is I want to do a shape tween to this object and I want to have it go from one color to the next color to the next color. So starting here at frame 1, it's going to be black. If I go to frame 10, I want it to start the spectrum of the rainbow. We're going to use uh, our good old friend Roy G. Biv, that you might remember, which is an acronym for remembering the colors of the spectrum, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. So Roy G. Biv. So we're going to need to put the positions in here. And what I want to also do is when our animation ends, I want it to end at black as well. So to begin with, I'm going to go to frame 10 and I'm going to press my F6 key to copy this keyframe forward. And that allows me to go in here now and change the color of this. I'm going to go in and let's start with red. So there's our R. I'm going to go and do this in 10 frame increments. Once again, F6 and this frame is going to be orange. Actually, maybe a little bit darker on the orange there. And once again, 10 frames and we can go and choose a yellow and another 10 frames and let's go get an orange green color there we go and another 10 frames and that will bring us into the blue area I'm going to do with kind of a light greenish blue and then we'll go with a darker blue for our indigo right about there and then finally we're going to go in with a violet color purple color there and at the very end here at frame 80 I'm going to make sure that we go back to black. So along the way, we start here at black, and then we go to red and orange and yellow, and so on. That gives us the full spectrum. Now, I'm going to go and select all of these keyframes by holding down the shift and selecting them. And from my properties window, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to select shape tween. And the arrows tell me that everything has gone successfully. So I now know if I drag my playback head, I can go and morph between the different colors as I drag down. So that's what our animation will look like. And that's really the hard part. We've done the animation, we've gotten it out of the way. Now what we need to do is put some controls in so that the animation can run based upon how we want it to behave as users. To begin with, I'm going to add a new layer to my timeline and I'm going to make this an actions layer. And what I want to do is I want to create a script that's going to make the playback head stay on frame one until the user interacts with this object, whatever it is. So I'm going to select that frame and I'm going to open up my actions window and I'm going to write a stop script, simply like that. So now when the playback head gets to frame one anytime, it will just sit there and wait for something to happen. Now, in order to make this interactive, we need to create a way for the user to trigger this animation. So I'm gonna add a brand new layer and I'm gonna drag it down here underneath my actions layer. And I'm just gonna call this my trigger layer and that's exactly what it's gonna be. It's gonna be a button whose purpose is to go and trigger this animation. Now what I want to do is I want to create a button that's going to be pretty much the same size and shape as this object. So the easiest way to do that is let me go and grab that object. I'm going to hit control C to copy it and then I'm going to go up to this keyframe here and I'm going to paste it in. So now I have something that's already the same shape and size as the object is going to fit over. I need to first go up to the modify menu 
and say convert to symbol and make this into a button symbol. And let's just call it trigger. Okay. And now we have an object that we can add a script to. And I'm going to go out here to my actions window. And once again, I'm now putting an action on a button that I've selected. And what I'm looking for is an event called a rollover. And with the rollover, I want the playback head to jump on the timeline. I want it to leave frame one where it's currently sitting. And I want it to go to and play frame two, which is the next frame where there's nothing telling the playback head to stay put so it can run through the animation comfortably. And I'm going to end this script and we should be all set to go. And let's take and first of all, take this button and we're going to make it invisible so we can see the object underneath it. So I'm going to go and set my alpha setting to 0% and I'm going to position it over the button. Now I may need to go over here and turn off my snap to object selector so that I can position this exactly where I want it to go. There it is. And finally, I only want this trigger to exist in frame one. So let me go to frame two here. I'm going to right click and insert a blank keyframe so that there's nothing else in here on our timeline to get in the way. So we should be all set to go. Now it's a matter of going back to scene one and I'm going to resize my stage just to make this a little bit more manageable. Let me make this uh, let's say 250 pixels by, uh, we'll just do 250 by 250. Okay and that makes our stage a lot smaller and I'm going to go and grab a, a copy of this object which is this little square that I've made which is now a movie clip and I'm going to position it on the stage. I can go in here and I can copy it and paste it and drag them together approximately where I want them to be. Let me grab those two and place those together. And let me grab these four and copy and paste. And let's grab these eight. Actually, I can just go and paste four more. Looks like I have enough room for those. There we go. And what I've done is I've taken all these little boxes and I've jammed them together. Let's go and copy these and copy and paste. And I'm just going to do the same thing with rows. Put those together. There we go. So really I'm making a, a black object which consists of all of these tiny objects. And we can do the same thing over here. And you can see by copying and pasting the stuff we've already put into place, it makes it very easy for us to do this quickly. And I think this will probably work. There we go. So I've taken and I have all of these objects. Lots and lots and lots of these objects are in place. And it's the same object over and over again, but each one will behave differently. Now the last thing I'm going to do, just to take this white border out of here, is I'm going to change the background color, the stage color, to black as well. So it will match. And there, we're ready to go. So let's give it a test. I'm going to hit Control Enter to test my movie. And now, as I move around here, I can doodle and as I hit each square it starts the animation for that particular square and as it runs through all the colors it then goes to black and then it goes back to frame one and resets itself and waits for the user to get involved once again. So now I can scroll through here, play around with it all I want. Hours and hours of entertainment. So it's worth giving it a try. If you have some time, if you understand what we've done here, feel free to give it a try and have some fun with this interactive time waster. There's a lot more information on this project and others in the Beyond Foundational Flash program from Learning Craft. And I encourage you to sign up today and learn how to become a great Flash whiz and, and do some really fun things. Anyway, thanks for coming along. This is Rob Graham, and I hope to see you soon.